Say hello to the nice people. Hi, nice friends. Okay. Let's get those back up. And that right there. Hey. Some faces. Hi, friends. How's everybody doing? Hi, team. Hi, team. What's happening, team? Gosh, my hair's so gross. It's so long. My my hair's so long. Oh, yeah, my hair is. Yours, yours looks stylish. It looks like it's on purpose. I look like I forgot to get my hair cut. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. <laughs> What's happening, Team Tude? Oh. Uh, What's happening, Twitch? What's happening, YouTube, where nobody watches until later? Yeah. Uh, but this goes out to you. If you're if you're watching this at a later date, you just found out and are looking at all our past streams where they're archived forever on YouTube. Uh, hi. Thanks for joining us in the future. Hi. This is the past. Yes. Things are not great here, mm -hmm. uh, but we're hoping they're better where you're at. But yeah. for those of us that are with us now, yes, as Rachel Cannon <laughs> pointed out, we do have a subscribe button because we actually we finished all our dumb paperwork that we put off for a month. Because things are happening. Things are going on. There we're are getting things, stuff done. We are getting stuff done. Um, I think I might have mentioned this last stream, but Barrett's been working on even more drawings for my animated series idea, and they are amazing. That'd be good. They're so good. Like, every time I look at them, I'm like, yes. Yes. <laughs> this will happen. Well, They're that good. They're so good. It's It, it plays to my strengths, which is drawing <laughs> cartoons instead of real people because I can't draw anymore. Uh, and... Uh, drawing uh, cartoony versions of horrific things because I like monsters and scary crap. So it's 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 been fun. Yeah, uh, and he's not like a jerk when I'm like, hey, why don't you change this and why don't we do this instead? He's like, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. It's nice. It's a I, good partnership. It's I, not him just being like, I'm drawing this because I know better. It's him being like, yeah. what do you want? It's cool. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we're gonna have to keep them on the, on the back burner and not show them off until a later time when we have more done. Yeah. Uh, they're all on paper because I can't figure out how to make my Wacom tablet work without, I can't draw a circle on my computer, uh, and that's very frustrating when you're trying to draw something and every time you draw a circle it's like, meow, meow. it's like, no, I just, I did this and it goes, Fwack. I'm like, alright, I've messed with the settings, I've messed with everything, I just need to take a class. So I've determined. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> Um, and, oh, hey, we got, we got our cheer 100 first. Thank you very much for the cheer. Cheer! <laughs> uh, so the oh, game... Oh, I should have, like, like, put on makeup and, like, a... no, why? tried for this one. You look amazing. <laughs> you're so pretty. Oh, I wasn't... I know you're not doing it for me. No. I know it's not for me, but if you were feeling insecure at all. Uh, no, no, I'm not feeling insecure, but sometimes it's fun to, like, put on makeup and get, like, all dressed up, and yeah. I just, I, 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 like, never do that anymore. Now, well, maybe I'll do that this weekend, just to, like, feel different. Yeah. I like both. I like not wearing makeup and wearing makeup. Yeah. I like not wearing makeup. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've done it a few times. It's not great. I had to do it for a lot of theater, and I'm always, like, Bleh. When I was in high school, I used to be really into guys with eyeliner. That sounds like you in high school. In high school, I thought, <laughs> in high school, I had a theory that everyone in the world would look hotter with eyeliner and pointy elf ears. <laughs> because I, I, I thought that it would make anyone look instantaneously elfin and different and yeah. therefore make right. them even more attractive. You may be right. Let the Tessa stare and start slapping ears on everybody. Up and ears and eyeliner. Quick <laughs> uh, on Bowers, I, I like that you point out that you wore a three-piece suit to school just because I love wearing suits. I have two modes. I dress like a total scumbag, <laughs> like a punk metal scumbag, uh, and a lazy one at that. I don't do any work. Uh, or I want to put on true. a suit, like a really nice suit, and just tie in the whole deal. Mm -hmm. I don't want to... Anything in the middle is just like... No, no thank you. I want to dress like a scumbag or uh, a, a, a classy French male model. I have a lot more options as a woman. You do. The middle, grounds for, the middle ground for men is awful because it's all casual khaki you hate that polo shit. shirts or like business casual, which is like, well, just, just wear a suit then. Like, why would you... 
You look dumb. You look like you don't know what you're wearing. <laughs> no offense to anyone watching the stream. Right. That's just a wear fan a suit. Khakis. Just, just wear a suit. <laughs> just stop. You look. You, you look like your grandfather. Maybe he's a great guy. Maybe it's an honor him. But if it's not, don't. Um, anyway. <laughs> The game you all picked this week from the the uh, bunch of games was the Beginner's Guide, which uh, is from the same folks that brought us the walking simulator I that know. I played. That was great, and I can't think of the name. I Play don't a know. Guy I know in an nothing. Office. No, nothing about this <sighs> game. I don't know anything about this game either. I haven't played it, but I know it's a very popular indie game. I know it's. I think it's a walking simulator, which is sort of a mean way of saying a game that doesn't just make you shoot stuff. Um, anyway, uh, that's what we're gonna be playing. So why don't we switch over to that? Are you okay. I don't yeah. know. I also don't know if this is a controller game or a uh, a controller game or a game where you can you have to use the pad. The, not the pads. Uh, right now, it looks like it's gonna be this. I know. I know nothing. I know nothing. I know oh, nothing, nothing, go. nothing. Hopefully I'll tell you about it. Please make sure your audio is on. It is. Okay. Oh. W. Oh, it's Wazzy. Yeah, okay. So. So what's that? Forward, left, backwards, right. Thank you and very you much for playing the beginner's guide. Like. My name is Davy Reed, and and I wrote The Stanley right Parable, back back and while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today Stanley I'm Parable? going to yes. tell you about a series of events Stanley that Parable happened awesome. between 2008 and 2011. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff. And his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. Talking about I found Coda. it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. And uh, mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. But what I like is that even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract the blobs controls. and impossible floating crates around the level. And of course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its I map. It's like a reminder that this video map. game was constructed by a real person. And it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head That's as really he was funny. building this? This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but Very that they careful. are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the game. The mouse sensitive. I want to get to know who this human being really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Uh, I got it. Okay. Uh, you can go to options. You can go to keyboard and mouse. And then knock that mouse sensitivity down. Just drag it. Right, drag it. That way. Down. Try that. Yeah, this is better. Yeah. yeah, that's great. And then go to bed. Yay! And quick. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. There you go. So, it's 2008. Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet. He just makes them Selena, and immediately the same, abandons uh, them and they sit on his Stanley computer Parables. forever. This is like their and I think Stanley he really Parables understood this image while. of himself as a recluse. Uh, uh, at one point he jokingly after. renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. So, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even and, uh, really pausing to try to understand what he just made. Until suddenly uh, one on day, he just stopped. It's pretty good. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game, and then he hasn't made another one since. And that's why and I'm this is a map from opportunity CS, to gather right? all of his work together. Team two, is because boom. I find his games powerful boom, boom. and yeah. interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. 
So I thanks for joining me on this. Yeah. If you have a particular yeah, interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d a v e y w r e d e n at gmail dot com. <laughs> okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. As each game is loaded, I'll show you the date that it was completed. <laughs> this first one was made in November. He keeps talking about Coda's games and showing all of his games. Oh, interesting. So this is his first game, mm. and he just keeps narrating and talking about Coda. <laughs> it's like that's interesting. Yeah, Let's see, narrator said that, but you can't hear. This is a very narration-heavy game. But, yes, or at least this beginning, anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> This game is called Escape from Whisper, and it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. You can click to fire the gun. It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid-development. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere, but then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. But ultimately we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. Huh. Enemy force neutralized. Yay. Nightfire used the classy emoji. Uh, this weekend I have what I always have, which is possible D and D on Saturday morning, and then a writer's or actually now rehearsals for my sketch show. Uh, which if you're in Austin, you should come see because it's gonna be up your alley. But I, don't know I love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. The last Thursday in. It's all board game themed. That's really cool. Are we doing anything on Saturday, dude? Yeah. On Saturday? Yeah. Uh, I'm hanging with Tom. Nice. I don't know how late into the night, but I, th I think we are playing later in the evening. Apparently, this space station has a labyrinth on it. I. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. that uh, Comic Con's. There's on. really That's no awesome reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so, in the interest of time, I'm just gonna skip you on past it. Oh, thanks. <laughs> he skipped me past the labyrinth. <laughs> okay, this is the part that's interesting. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. On Sunday, we'll be playing a game. From one to one to three ish probably on the stream. One to two. One to two? Yeah, because yeah. I have a, a podcast meetup and an interview on Sunday. Uh, maybe I'll play till three. Let's keep keep the party rolling. You'll have to end a little bit before three because we're starting our recording at three. I I'm, I'm always in here playing games. Well you guys yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. <laughs> but you can't talk to them. I can talk a little bit. I guess so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh wait, I can't go. No, Shannon has a great Shannon has a great voice. It's not that weird. You have your fingers on the wrong buttons. So. Oh, I do. Thank you. Hey, you there in the engine room? You could save us all. No, Shannon has a um, agent. Uh, we could disrupt it by introducing a great enough uh, heat signature. If you uh, what? It's you Ohio, to Idaho. Stop the I don't know. Whichever, so Nebraska, I think. 
Would you do it? I'm trying to hear. Hold Would on. Would you give yourself? Talking to the, the chat. I know, no, no, just for a second. I damn it, I missed all of that. Oh well. There's nothing now. <laughs> yeah, <it's fine. laughs> you can I'm talk. not answering right my branching point. Unfortunately, <laughs> the only option is to step into the beam. Okay. Let me pause here for a second. What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. Huh. He's basically just, just describing the game to me. Right. Do I do it again? Try it. Ooh. Whoa. Whoops. <laughs> That's not good. The beam causes you to start floating. And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it, like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking. But what's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work so on this cool. and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. If there's any super important information you think Brett should have, Barrett should have that I'm not telling him, feel free to type it into the, the comment thread. It's fucking a lot. It's really cool. So like that was a glitch? Yes. Oh, you know that? Yeah. Okay. I can but, tell by looking at it. That's but why I said kept, that's not good. He kept it in because he was so in love with it. Right. And that so became backwards. part of the game. Yep. In this game, you can only walk backwards. Oh. Uh oh. No, you can only walk backwards in this game. That's the point. Uh, You're stuck on a wall. Oh, damn it. Gotta go backwards. This is coach. There's a lot of space punk going on in the chat right now. Well, mostly Kobe putting that in. Okay, okay. I can do this. Okay. So it's a short and relatively minimalist experiment combining motion and narrative. It is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre existing trope. <laughs> this is I kind of like love this alright am I walking straight I am our video games art future always behind her they can be
It's a short little thought, it says what it wants to say, and then it ends. Didn't That's need cool. anything more than that. That's Which to cool. me is why it works, because it gets out quick. Okay, You're cool. next one. You're cool. And that's it. Okay, the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games, and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. Okay. Quick game hours, I like your... Uh, Oftentimes, time, uh, Coda would put boxes. bizarre titles like this one at the start of his games. Okay. I wish I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like... That was it. It was dead to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you going to do? This is... These are cool. Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. So why, if Code is not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. It's warm and nice and filled with little ideas for games. Huh. Coda would often tell me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. It can be a very slow climb to get there. That's really cool. Does it, do, well, this do is people in the, everyone in the stream puzzle. already know about this game? Go ahead and no. See if you can solve some it. people do, some don't. Oh, I talked right when he was saying something, now I missed what he said. Oh, darn it. I missed what he said. Oh, there we go. go in here. Did I miss something? Try flipping the switch again.
We're playing the beginner's guide. Our Dicks. Come back, narrator. Ah, oh, shoot. All right, let me just walk you oh, through it. Oh, okay. You're gonna hit the switch on the outside to open the door, then hit the same switch and walk through the door before it closes. You'll see a second switch on the inside, which will open the second door. Oh, I messed it up. I bumped into it. All right, I gotta try it one more time. All right. Yeah! Don't forget that solution, because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. We're gonna see it a lot. Okay, so that is a very popular puzzle. It's a great game for you because it keeps telling you what to do next. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> instructions. I like instructions. I like knowing exactly. So that seems to be it, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve a puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. All right. Now I'm going to modify the game again so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. What? That's the How map that? for the game? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game, since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So, uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then, in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Either way, I think that the point is the same. Is that most of the time, you don't get to know what you're missing. Or even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? Cool! Yeah! Yeah, my convention agent said the best thing is for people to just reach out to their conventions and let them know that uh, they want to see me there. I've got two confirmed for sure Australia and Memphis, but I can't remember the name of the con in Memphis. I'll get back to you on that. Grace Con! No. It's, a, it's actually an Elvis uh -huh. convention. So, this, this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes mm -hmm. his games are connected mm -hmm. somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in. Some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. Oh, really? It caused controversy. Why? Spoilers. <laughs> Let's talk about video game development for a second. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which determines what the game can and cannot do. So, in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. To make all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine does well. The tools available to the creator shape what kinds of creative work they're going to end up making. 
you might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear boxy corridors. Stairs? Yes. Whoa. Oh really, he won't comment about whether or not this is fact or fiction? That's weird. I'm looking at Anna Minneapolis right now, just so you know. Uh, let's we'll take a look at it. <laughs> Don't worry, Arctic Snail, you can keep talking. I'm the one who keeps an eye on the stream points and stuff that Jen should read. But I just looked up Anna in Minneapolis, so now I know what it is. I have some friends in Minneapolis. So, for that one, if Jen goes, maybe I'll go. Bye! Uh... Uh... Oh! Okay. No falling damage. How do you jump? How do you jump? Think about it. How do you do? This is really cool. In a way, Kobe, this seems less like a game and more like a curated experience. Coda's yeah. original oh. design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. Yeah. If you don't mind, I think we're gonna skip that. What is this is game? something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game wants to actually be playable, whether it means anything if no one can get what through it. And I, I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. I think you nailed it, Nightfire. There wasn't. It's the puzzle again, with the exact same solution as the last time. Oh, I touched it, damn it. 
I gotta go through without touching it. That's the problem. Riku can't hear him. The RTX is here. Boo. I'm closing. such an idiot. I know. I know how, and I just okay. forgot. I forgot. Uh, Nightfire. Austin is pretty cool to live in. Um, it all depends on what you want from the city that you live in. Um, upsides are there's often there's still no clear too. indication of what makes this piece so super special nice that Coda is going to turn to it way. over and over. Um, but I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Downsides are traffic, like any city that is underpopulated, and uh, cost of living, uh, which has gone up a lot in the last eight years. Yeah, and depending on what industry yeah, you're in, there aren't necessarily the jobs system. to back it up. He fashioned Ooh. out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. Is he really that bad? Because I'm not noticing and it usually kicks my ass. You just made me real paranoid, Rick, okay? Huh? I keep using the wrong number. Uh, I don't know what you'd want to do, Nightfire. Like, if you have theater and tech, it's AV tech experience, you could probably get work here and get paid. But, nah. but it's going to be sporadic. That works really hard here. I'll be real honest with you. Yeah. But you're more likely to get work as tech in theater than you are as an actor or paid work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's so. more paid tech work than paid acting work, that's for sure. But if you're looking for something else, it all depends on what the else is. Um, the film and TV uh, work here got real hard once... The Texas State Ledge decided not to uh, give tax breaks to um, film and television, even though that brings in money and prestige. They said no, um, but you know, tax breaks for other things are perfectly fine. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Arctic Snail, just, just as an FYI, Jen does voice acting for Rooster Teeth. She doesn't work at Rooster Teeth, if that makes any sense, because they're like a, a company, so, uh, but, you might be able to speak on what it's like to work there from other people's experience. It also, I think it's just like any other job, it depends on what you're doing there. Yeah, I think it does depend, um, I know that some of my friends that work there, I mean, they definitely have some stress, for sure, but uh, I know a lot of them enjoy what they're doing. Uh, I'm, like Barrett was saying, just contracts, so I don't work there full time. Uh, I wouldn't want to, to be honest with you, but that's because I have a lot of other things that I want to pursue 
and if I worked there full time, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to create potentially create the shows I want to create, the movies I want to do, and stuff like that. So, I'm happy being contracts voice for them. Super happy. Well, like for in a way, Austin's turning into LA light. Um, yeah, but without the industry. industry, it's but way more tech jobs. Really shitty. Way more employment if you work in software development or uh, tech, not theater tech, but like tech industry. It's a There's plenty of stuff here. It's sort of like a mix between okay, LA and um, well, but for Silicon some Valley. reason, Coda fixates on uh, this lamppost. It's going to appear so. at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think yeah, we know about that point, scene, Rikushan. You know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. But there are other things. Now he wants We've been to LA. To. We liked he LA. Wants a reference point. Uh, quite he a bit. The work um, of leading to something. But he wants a destination. Austin is definitely a lot more chill than LA. The traffic here is it's congested, but it's not terrifying. We're gonna see it in the work as well. His games are just gonna become a lot more cohesive, um, a lot more. But if you're gonna move somewhere, with more of a clear idea uh, behind them, this and isn't a terrible get, place to come that to. That idea will get clearer and clearer. Just don't expect to get work, a ton of work in theater or, or film or television. Uh, but if you just want a cool place to live yeah. and you got the right, you got the right skills and the right means, it's pretty great. Yeah. For an American city, it's pretty fantastic. Yeah, no, it, it, it is great. It's just, it's starting to be not the place for me, which makes me super sad. Yeah. If you're a Jen Brown type, you may want to think about moving somewhere else. So first off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game is not connected to the internet. All of the notes that you're going to see have been written by Coda. This was actually the first game of his that I ever played. <laughs> this was shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam in Sacramento, where I grew up. I saw him working on this very level, and it was just so different from anything that anyone else was doing. So right away I was like, I have to be friends with this person. In I'm from a much smaller city, so this... Trying Austin to get his still attention. seems pretty amazing uh, to me in a lot of ways. I was um, over enthusiastic. But he was very gracious about it and he was of living in a really crappy small city. And like oh, sorry eventually. Oh, feel free I got to really skip far over away. any of these notes <laughs> doing anything for you. Um, anything extra is gonna happen if you read all of them. I no, I can't hear the game. Either way, sorry, I'm talking over to the To me game they convey a sense of loneliness. I see this person who's filled with thoughts and feelings and beliefs and has no way to express them except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. But it's ironic, isn't it? That in playing this game and seeing how alone Coda often felt, that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect with him. And I have to be honest with you, this idea is really seductive to me. That I could just play someone's game and see the voices in their head and, and get to know them better and have to do less of the messy in-person socializing, I could just get to know you through your work. I think this is why I always liked Dakota's games so much, is because it felt like they let me have that connection. I felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. And then I feel less lonely. Yeah, I saw that. <clears throat> this is like remnants of previous players. I'm liking right. this, but now I'm fixating about whether or not this is real or not after, I think it was Preston that commented. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's made to appear that players are leaving these messages for you, but they're not. It's the narrator, which made sense because I thought those were all a little too uh, sanitized. 
for actual internet comments on a random game. Yeah. The first the first seven things would be like 4chan Pepe. <laughs> oh yeah, no, these are all pre written. Yeah. You read the second half of that. <laughs> This fake game is kind of like a um, uh, Milgram experiment, experiment as a game. Not safe, not safe! I think Quigon, part of the gimmick with this is that he's using the assets that you could get at the time he was making the game, uh, and that they get better and better as they go. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> at the end of this level, we're going to see the puzzle again, and here I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Each of these games represents an idea that was on Coda's mind at the time that he was making it. And the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. In each of his games, after exploring a theme that, you know, he might find difficult, Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution, he understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. Well, Arctic, I get the feeling you're supposed to get feels playing this game or these games. You know what to do. Ow. Ow. And because there's this dark area between the doors, a space between spaces, before you move on, you get to pause. Ready? Just for a moment, yeah. a few seconds to reflect on and let go of the events that led <laughs> you here. To step back and connect the pieces together. To grasp at that elusive bigger picture. I know. These people can figure it out. 
these fake people. Okay, this one is tough. It's gonna kind of just spin its own wheels for a few minutes. Hang with it. Okay, he says this one's tough. It's gonna, you know, do, I forget what he said, whatever, hang with it. Anything. Oh, there we go. That opens. See, like, this is it, the whole game, and there's nothing that's particularly interesting about it. You just walk to the end of a hallway. Except, for some reason, Cody gets MR really fixated on this prison that has all of this modern furniture. And I don't know why, but he decides he needs to revisit this prison. He's gonna start over, use the same assets, turn it into something else. Okay, cool, here's version two. should go in the center of the room. What do you think? <clears throat> We're gonna put a giant hole in the ground. <laughs> uh, let's see with a huge, let's see if it'll give me a huge picture of a horse. No, we're gonna go with 10 stoves lined up against the wall. Let's try this again. Catches, all right. But still, it's not really what you just said. Just it's it's, it's kind of just weird for weirdness' sake. Tables, tables, tables. So okay, he throws it out and starts over. This time, he comes at the prison idea from a different direction. <laughs> Ikea. <laughs> Very much Ikea.
this one. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to hear a weird thought. And of course, now the table is gone and you can't okay. begin the chain of events to escape. The prison, now you gotta recreate what you just did. Here's a version where there are no bars, but you okay, can't right. actually get to Let's the well. And then a version where the inside of the prison is the outside, and the outside is the inside. Let me try to figure out a few more of these. I mean, he really unloaded on this prison idea. There's nearly a dozen of them. Personally, I think it's awful to watch this. To see a person basically unraveling through their work. And for what? Like, at what point do you just go, eh, maybe there are game ideas other than this prison that I could be working on. But Coda doesn't have that voice telling you to stop that particular mechanism of defense against yourself. Without it, you just spiral. And so he keeps going and going and going and going and going, and then he hits on something, and he likes it. And that's it. He's done. He stops making prisons. Yeah, this it's a huge of the mind fuck. He created. And the reason oh. I think it works is that the prison is not actually in it. That's the only option. <laughs> it's a conversation. And so this is what Coda wants, is to be able to talk to someone, to share what's on his mind, and to get some good advice from someone who knows. But the irony is that even in this scenario, you're still talking to yourself. You know, all of these games so far are Coda talking to himself. You guys were joking about Time Lords. Tiny Wiley.
I can see why he considers this a fitting conclusion to the prison games. After all of the obsession and frustration, just to be told by someone you can trust that things are going to be okay, wouldn't that be nice? This is Barrett. Hi. So Barrett is like my man friend. Man friend. I.e. boyfriend. Mm-hmm. I love Jim Brown. And creative partner. Yeah. I love Jim Brown. One of my creative partners. I have many. I made her do this. I get bored. I made her do this. Doop, 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 doop. Yeah, you did. But I've been enjoying it. Yeah, you have. Um, and this is a room in the half of the house that we share. Oh, wow. <laughs> To me, this environment is meant to represent Coda's puzzle, with the two doors on either really side cool. and a dark transitional space between. Plenty of room in this dream, Selena. You'll notice She's that the quality of the art is a step up from previous games, including this new and improved chat system, which he started using from this point on. From here on out, he begins putting much more effort into the visual polish of his work, and this particular game took two months to create as a result. Well, I'm just, yeah, I'm just cleaning. Oh, I took her drink. drink. Scattered on the floor of the bedroom. I tried to do that, and I tried to be preemptive, but apparently I have to do things exactly when hey, you want me to. Hey, you fixed the books. After the intense side of prison <laughs> games, this oh house my God. almost feels like cleansing. It's the moment after a particularly difficult or traumatic experience where you just need to let it sit and digest inside of you and eventually cohere into something meaningful. I 
know that Coda really liked this game. Of all of his work, actually, this was the only one that he called me up to ask me to come over and look at it. This was during a period of a few months where he was, like, grossly happy all the time. Just walked around with a constant <laughs> smile on his face. How? Neverlaster showed up. Yeah. Hey. Hi, Neverlaster. I do think we're ending relatively soon, though, are we not? Yeah, we are. It's almost 940. Yeah. Well, as far as cow chop goes, I can tell you Jen, Jen can put up with a lot of stuff. Um, but she also lays down the law. What? Uh, working with the guys at cow chop. It's another, like, streaming. Uh, but also sketches and stuff. Oh. Uh. I'm not familiar with Couch Up. Yeah. Well, thanks for swinging by. Never last. We're always happy to see you. Yeah. King of books. Books. More books? More books. The never a, ending. It's a great game. Yeah. Just walk around cleaning stuff? The. Uh, this. The whole, like, narrative of this is interesting. I. Curious to see where it's going. I really I'm liked it. I'm glad he found some <laughs> but then when you <laughs> But then when someone was like, Hey, uh this might not be real, I'm like, huh? So I'm like curious now to know whether or not he made this all up or not. Either way I find it really intriguing. But of course it can't last. The music stops, your companion is gone, it's time to leave. The door at the top of the hill is now open as well. Again, you can't stay in the dark space for too long. You just can't. You have to keep moving. It's how you stay alive. How was Mexico? Sorry, Neverlaster. Which is the whole point of the puzzle doors, right? That sooner or later you have to pick up and move. I really thought that was the point of it. <clears throat> is it a, a good stopping point? This one gets a bit goofy. Yeah. All right. Right when he's right when he's like, this one gets a bit goofy. <laughs> uh, Oof. Uh, I am curious to keep playing this, but I, uh, I really want to know more about it. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry, I was reading something. That was really interesting. Yeah, I mean. Good choice. Good, no, really good choice. Was that fun? Fun might not be the right word, but it wasn't not fun. It's like going to a, a museum. Yeah, I liked it. I really, so, so then yeah, if I liked it, then I guess, yeah, it was fun. Yeah. But it's not a game I'd be like, wow, that was like, I had such a, that was such a fun game. Uh, I wouldn't, you know, yeah. describe it as a fun fun game but it was uh, hi kobe thanks for game. joining it was a really good game it was a really interesting game i man i want to play it more because i want to see what i, I want to now i'm curious it's piqued my interest i really want to like play it to the end now i want to figure out what else happened yeah interesting yeah is that what you, you didn't hear any of it so. i got i got it out of context did you? Yeah, okay. I figured it out from context clues. It's like his his life 
of trying to design a game before he did the Stanley Parable, which was like his first real game. No, he's so. talking about another designer oh. and he's showing apparently he's talking about another designer and showing another designer's work and okay. trying to hypothesize what these games meant and then also say he he was saying he knows this guy and that like coming away with theories and what the guy said mm. about making these games and yes yeah, this whole story about him and this programmer interesting but but i don't know if the story is true so bye kobe bye bye, bye. Kobe. bye kobe uh bye. yeah cool yeah that was that was an inch that was that was neat i don't know if that was interesting for y'all to watch me play but that was really cool that was cool that was it's more like oh yeah that was a cool game and not like, oh, did you see when you the know. explosion and the boom yeah. and the Batman yeah. punched all those guys? Uh, yeah. But that was clever and <laughs> weird. And no. I like clever and weird. Nevertheless, it just knows that we have a sub button up there. Uh, just now, uh, we had, uh, I think it was because of the stream that y'all did. It put us over the top for like hours and viewers, so they gave us... The option to become Twitch subscribers probably three or four weeks ago, and we just did it tonight. So now we got a sub button. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. Yes, yeah, sub, sub it up. Sub, and if sub, you want to sub, sub, sub it up, if you want to check out uh, the official Jen Brown plays Twitter, it's yeah, that's live now. That's at a thing. Jen Brown plays. If you want to take a look at Jen Brown's new website, it's thejenbrown.com. No spaces, no dashes, no nothing. But it still needs work. Yeah, we haven't done much. We haven't done much to it, so keep that in mind. Thanks for subscribing, Neverlaster. Hey, (laughs) thanks, Neverlaster. And um, we're expanding our schedule. Uh, We are. We'll be playing some games. That starts this week. Sunday around 1 o'clock. This Sunday at 1 so it's going to be, I originally want to be uh, uh, retro and indie games, but we want to add in narrative stuff, Jen's choice kind of things as well. Uh, yeah, and I've been really wanting to play uh, season two, or part two, not season two, but part two, I guess season two, relatively appropriate term, part two of Life is Strange. Yeah, that's coming. So we'll probably play that on Sunday for a little while. Yeah, so I'm gonna Jen's got another semi-conflicting thing, but at one o'clock we're gonna start that. Uh, once she goes, I'll probably dick around for a little while, and then on Mondays it's co-op Mondays night. Mondays co-op. Uh, we're gonna do our b- 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 best to play all the Borderlands games, uh, and probably by the time we're done, uh, since we won't be playing for too too long. Uh, <laughs> Borderlands 3 will be out and we can play that mm-hmm. <clears throat> and y'all can all laugh at me when we get to the weapons part and you hear me just go just tell me what to get rid of yeah, and tell, tell me, me what to, to keep tell, tell me, me what to get sell. rid of tell me what to keep um, <laughs> yeah let me co-op and then we'll break it up with some other stuff in there too uh, and be- then Wednesdays is still going to be Patreon picks yep. so Patreon members uh, you, if you're not a Patreon member one dollar gets you the option to vote on what Jen plays on One Wednesday dollar. nights. One dollar. That is twelve dollars a year to just help decide what I play here on Wednesdays. That's a pretty good deal. One dollar a month. That's it. That's like nothing. That's nothing. Yeah. You could give up a dollar a month. And Nightfire, thanks for the cheer one hundred. Appreciated. Uh I don't honestly I don't know what everything all means in this. But rad. Uh, with the with the Twitch thing. So, uh, mm. additionally, if you have any suggestions for what we can do on Twitch, how to make stuff better, uh... I can't stop yawning, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, how to make stuff better with the Twitch channel specifically, or with the YouTube, feel free to let me know. Never last, I'll definitely hit you up for website assistance, because I just use a basic template for funsies. Um, and, yeah, we're just gonna try and get content on everything because people love content uh, <laughs> uh how much do you need step. to give to pick the game outright that's a good question 
You know, actually, I was just talking to Barrett about that the other day and about whether or not that would be a good uh, Patreon add-on for a one-time uh, donation as opposed to most... my. I have two tiers on Patreon right now and they're both monthly. So they kind of hinge on the fact that ideally you are contributing that amount every month. And they're both small. It's a $1 or $5. Um, but I have been thinking about instituting a one single time to pick what I play, but we kept going back and forth on how much that should be. Yeah. Because some games are really expensive, some games aren't, so, but I also don't want to have to flex it depending on the game because that gets really messy. So we're trying to decide on what a good, like... Price yeah. point would be for I, that. My logic is like, if you want us to play a game I don't own, then I have to purchase it. But I also don't want to make somebody. Uh, I don't want to make somebody buy a game that will that you'll play once and then I'll probably play forever, uh, and I get a free game out of it, which just <laughs> seems unfair too. So we just got to figure that out. Uh, if you give us the game, oh, that's a good point. Although you're still, folks are still buying games on, they could always buy a game and then share it on Steam. Mm -hmm. uh, just, like, gift it to us. And then they're covering the whole cost, which could be, you know, whatever the regular price is on Steam, or if it's a cheaper price on whatever. Um, yeah. But then that's not really generating anything for the Patreon. Hmm. Right. Hmm. We'll have to think about it. We still have to think about it. Yeah. We'll have to think about it. We might just... Find a middle number in yeah, between the high and the low ball and just be like, eh, we'll just be fair. This much. We're just trying to be fair. We don't want to rip anybody off or no. make somebody pay for a game that I get to own forever. I also have a feeling, though, that people, the people that would do that reward aren't going to do it if they can't afford it. That's I would hope. True. I would hope that no one's giving money to me if they can't afford it because Lord knows I understand how that goes. I'm asking for money from y'all. <laughs> so please don't please do not give money to me if you cannot afford to do that no. um no i'm not gonna be one of those people that's like one like no if you can't afford two it's fine like one dollar now i feel like that's kind of like if you want to help pick the games one dollar a month that's not too hard to ask but more than that i totally get yeah i totally get it um but yeah definitely you know, check out Jen's Patreon. There's a link below. There's a link to Jen's Twitter. We'll add another link for the Jen Brown Plays official Twitter. Uh, we got a lot of work to do, but I have a full-time job and a bunch of projects. Jen has a part-time job and a bunch of projects that also doesn't do any of this. I mean, not that you couldn't, but it's just I'm doing it. I'm trying yeah. to learn uh, some SEO and digital marketing, so this is a good way for me to practice. Um, uh, regardless... Um, I want to thank everybody for joining us. We've been doing this for quite a while now. We have. We have, haven't <clears throat> we? Yeah. It's been going on for since June, May. Was it May? What? Really? Yeah, something like that. I'll have to go back and check. I think it was June. Ah, um, so that. six months at least. Uh, and Almost a year. <laughs> six months at least. Almost a year. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess it's almost a year. Um, but regardless, uh, um, you know, we I started this kind of as a bit um, so that Ooh. Jen could play some video games Damn and get it. better at them. But also, I, I did want to give her an opportunity to, to talk to her fans and have, like, a nice direct contact uh, for folks that can't come to RTX. Uh you know, don't get to see appearances with Jen. So, uh, in that time, without doing any real promotion or, you know, outside of Twitter, uh, we got ourselves to the point where we could have a, you know, this, the, the cute little subscribe button up there. Mm -hmm. Um, and an opportunity to make a little extra money. Um. I know. I'm so excited that Wolves Inside got fully funded. I can't wait. <laughs> Sam and I were talking on the phone the other day and we were like, yeah. Yeah. So thanks, or thanks for texting, texting. Sorry. So thanks for making this happen. Is basically yes. what, I'm, what I'm saying. Is thanks for you know getting involved. 
Uh, team, we really appreciate it. Team Toot. Team Toot is really rad. Team Toot's the best team. Team Toot is the only team yeah, that, that I want to be involved in. Because <laughs> uh, I don't play sports. <laughs> so yeah, follow Jen, uh, at the underscore Jen Brown on Twitter. B dot, at B dot tribe on Twitter. And then at Jen Brown Plays on Twitter. Uh-huh. Those are the best things. And then... Uh, if you're also, if you're like relatively new and you're watching this, I also have a podcast called Women in Caskets that's pretty fucking cool. Um, and you can check that out on Twitter. And we've got a lot of really, really great episodes coming up. Um, some really good guests. We haven't had guests in a while and we have two really cool guests lined up for the next few episodes. So just check that out. All right. Thanks again. Uh, we'll see you, uh, maybe not all of you, maybe some new folks on s- 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 Sunday. Oh, yeah, Sunday, yeah, we'll be, Sunday, 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 Sunday at one, and I'll be doing, uh, Life is Strange, part two. So if you have not seen Life is Strange all the way through, you probably don't want to watch the stream. Well, it is a prequel. Oh, wait, it's a prequel? Mm-hmm. Oh, shit, I didn't realize that. I ruined it for you. Spoiler. <laughs> hey. Well, maybe never mind then. Maybe right. never mind. Thanks again, team. See you next. See you what Sunday, Monday, and then next week. Bye. Bye.